Earth Healing. This is Al Fritsch, and we are talking today about something which uh, is a little bit fearful, catastrophe if we do not act now. This title refers to climate change, of course, and an article was written earlier this month, that's August 2018, uh, which was entitled A Hothouse Earth. And it brings the point up that if we do not c uh, control the rising temperature from the post-industrial era, which has already been a little more than one degree Celsius, and if it rises to two or three, we're going to have a lot of trouble. But it says that it can reach a point of where we no longer have control. There isn't any longer an if. And so we're trying to say that if it happens, that we allow this to continue at present rates, which is 4.5% rise in energy use in the last year alone, in an earth that is trying to be quite aware that we are in the stage of moving towards human activated climate change. Think about this. That 4.5% refers to uh, petroleum, which is 41% of it. Uh, there is natural gas, and that's uh, rising now to 32%. Coal going down now to 21%, and biomass at 6%. This means that because we are using more air conditioning, now you would say, but we Americans are not increasing it that much. We don't have to be the ones. Actually, the Chinese 400,000, 400 million, I mean, of these people have actually risen into the middle class. And all of them want to have air conditioning also. Think of the Indians throughout the, a good part of South Asia. Think of others who want to join the ranks of those who are comfortable with the use of energy. And this rise of energy use is something that b baffles us all at a time when we should be moving away, because uh, it is so important to move away from fossil fuels, we are, instead of moving into the renewable energy era, that means solar, wind, and geothermal, hydro, areas which have no emissions of carbon dioxide, that instead of moving into these areas, we are actually filling the gap with a lot of the fossil fuels that we've had in the past. And so instead of improving, at this very moment, we are at best plateauing, holding on, and not decreasing the amount of use of fossil fuels. Uh, even the frogs agree with all of this. But anyway, we are, we are coming to a point where we have to consider ourselves as being the activists, the ones that actually try to make a change, to make the if a full reality that we've got to change now. The catastrophe is before us. We can all see it in the higher temperatures for the last three years. Each have beaten the previous year, and uh, the year 2018 is probably going to break the previous three years record anyway. It is getting hotter, not only in the United States, and we have a lot of uh, drought in the West that shows the use of uh, wildfire as being uh, not only a normal, but now an abnormal approach and condition for many parts of that region. Furthermore, it occurs also in Europe and in Northern Europe, areas such as uh, Sweden, uh, where actually the forests are also burning, and uh, we have troubles in Greece and, and uh, Portugal and other parts of that continent. The world needs to know that things are going in a wrong direction, and, but we can still do something about it. We can do it in three ways. The first is that we have to uh, be willing to uh, cut back on the efficiency, uh, inefficiencies that we use and become more conservative on what, when we use uh, energy of all sorts. And secondly, we need to move to the renewable energy era as quickly as we can. But there's a third aspect to this. And this third one is sometimes considered not related, but it is. 
and that is the terrible inequality that has occurred in our world, an inequality in which the upper 1% own over half of what this country is, the richest of this country, owned by a very small fraction of our people, and their percent grows as to what they have. It is a power that they have, and part of that power is they are denying that there is any problem here. The deniers include those who are the privileged few, the billionaires, those who can get what they want because they have the influence to buy it from the candidates with their money that they can now use and do uh, for the benefits in which they want for themselves. Interestingly enough, this is a return to what had happened in the past in this country. When we tried to come to grips with uh, smoking, back in the 1950s and 60s, this was known to be a, a medical problem. But then gas, uh, then uh, we threw a, a certain amount of distrust on the statistics. And uh, that distrust uh, got a lot of coverage, continued to hold itself out, and therefore they extended the profits that were being made on tobacco for 40 years before good, good regulations were put into effect in the 1990s. There, about a four, fourth to a fifth of the people suffered heavily, and many of them died with shortened lives. But here is a different story. This story is one in which the greater part of our world's population will suffer from us failing to do what was needs to be done. And that is, we have to be people uh, who truly, in some ways, uh, are not merchants of doubt, but those who show that we must increase uh, the uh, regulations that we have at this time. We must impose a change. The United States, instead of being a leader of the world, it was a leader in the in the uh, actual emissions that caused what is happening now, but instead of being a leader in taking it uh, and changing things, has dropped out of the Paris Climate Change Accord. Only country in the world that is not within it. And our failure to be there by our current administration uh, is an act of denial of what is really occurring in the world today. And for Christian believers, they would say, the evil one is at work. And so it truly is an example of where people have gone against what 99% of the climate change uh, scientists say is happening, and follow a 1% which is in the hands of those of big energy uh, who pay them to say the opposite. And what is happening then is that the United States, instead of taking a leadership role, something that not must be done in the world today uh, to uh, address climate change, is taking the opposite. Even to this day, after 70 years, the U.S. energy expenditure has gone, has not changed at all. 48% of the, of the money used for energy goes to fossil fuels. Another 24% goes for nuclear uh, productions, which are unsafe also. Instead of spending a lot, if not all, of the forces on either energy efficiency or on renewable energies, it moves in the direction, rather, of, of keeping the status quo and therefore continuing what is in the past. The th one of the great problems we also have is that in place of coal, we are not replacing it totally with renewables, though renewables are growing, but rather natural gas. Now here is where the part of the problem is. Natural gas also burns and, uh, and produces uh, greenhouse emissions, but one of the emissions that comes from this is without the burning, the components of the natural gas includes methane, which is 23 times as effective as a greenhouse gas than is carbon dioxide, which is the normal uh, emission, which also comes from burning natural gas. But as we have fracking, 
our world around us, we are getting a lot of more of natural gas and to where this country, the United States, has become an energy exporter of this. But calling it clean, where at the same time, the Environmental Protection Agency, which had started a project before the present administration, to actually determine the amount of loss of the natural gas in the processing, in transportation, and in the utilization of the natural gas. Instead of this, the thing came to an end. And so we have a sense of ignorance before us at this moment as to exactly how much loss there is. It could be three or four percent of the total natural gas, which is enormous when it comes to the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that occur. So we should look at this from different viewpoints. We as believers of the future, which is what our audience should be here, not, no matter what the religious denomination, we must believe that we need to have a future earth for, to live in. If we believe in this, then we must deny and confront the deniers of those who say that there is nothing wrong. We have to give that we cannot allow them free hand to continue to uh, give the propaganda that they have as in the past two years. Also, we must not excuse ourselves. The fact that we are ignorant of all the results that could happen does not mean that we are in any way lacking in his expertise as being citizens who can and must act today. And the third thing is we can't escape. This is very hard. It's a hard subject. It's something that we like to get away from occasionally because we can't talk about it all the time. So we have to understand the difference between a healthy type of distraction where we need to have recreation and balance of mental and physical powers. And also we have to be focused, returning over and over to a subject that is in absolute need of being expressed. We have to do them both and keep it in balance. So therefore, escape is not one of our uh, options. We have to remember that when we take our entertainment, when we do other projects, we are simply trying to balance ourselves for in such a way that we can handle this issue with all the greater forthrightness that we can give. We can see this both politically and spiritually. Politically, we have to vote for environmental people. The candidates are out there. We have to encourage them and give them the support they need in order to make this climate change a major issue. We have to lobby, and we could lobby such people that have an ear to our president or our administration, such as some of the people who are the evangelical Christians who believe in prosperity Christianity. We have to lobby them to get to our president or maybe his own relatives who understand the situation also so that change can be made. Our country has got to take a leadership role. It's not enough for just the states or the cities or other parts of our country to do their things. The, the frogs agree with me. They constantly do. But anyway, the, uh, that is our political stance that we must take. Petitions lobbying, supporting people, letter writing. We've got to do everything in our power to make climate change an issue and keep it there. The spiritual aspects are there too. We have to pray because the prophets are who call for this, those, the good prophets, not the ones who always try to make people comfortable, but the ones who show that we have to speak out on reality. Spirituality in its deepest form means that we have to understand what is happening and say it and do something about it. We have to pray, of course, but we have to do more. We have to recruit those who are also people believing in the future to join us in the world in which we live. In conclusion, we restate uh, our original title, Catastrophe, What 
if we do not act now. Let us remember that there is an urgency here that every one of us must convey to our other friends and relatives. This is something that is needed because otherwise the bell will truly toll against our earth itself. We are the inhabitants, we are the people that are called to save it. This is Al Fritsch at earthhealing.info.